Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries. I'm RJ. We're going to look at the game that kicked off one of the most popular series of all time, the original Sonic the Hedgehog. This is one of my personal favorites. Let's get into it. Sonic the Hedgehog is a trailblazing platformer released for the Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, in summer 1991. The game's protagonist, an anthropomorphic hedgehog, was created to directly rival Nintendo's flagship character, Super Mario. After flirting with the idea of going with an armadillo, a dog, and even a rabbit, Sega decided to make the main character a spiky blue hedgehog named Mr. Needlemouse. They thankfully changed his name to Sonic. His signature red shoes were inspired by Michael Jackson and Santa Claus and his personality based on Bill Clinton's get it done attitude. Okay. The story involves Sonic's nemesis, Dr. Robotnik, also known as Dr. Eggman in Japan. Robotnik has trapped the animals of South Island inside capsules and enemy robots. It's basically up to Sonic to be the hero and save the day. Six emeralds can be collected along the way to obtain the so-called good ending, but it really doesn't change much. Gameplay is similar to other platformers that came before it, but much faster. Sonic can run down slopes to pick up speed, launch off of springs placed around the levels, and zip through loop-the-loops. The physics feel amazing, and it's something that developers are struggling to duplicate to this day. Sonic's health is based on the rings that he is carrying. Much like coins in a Mario game, if you collect 100, you are rewarded with an extra life. Take one hit by an enemy or spikes, and all of your rings will go flying. If you are hit without any rings in your possession, you will die. A shield power-up will give you an extra hit if you are able to find one. Every zone in the game is made up of three acts, and you must face off with a Robotnik boss battle at the end of Act 3. Level 1 is the iconic Green Hill Zone. Just about everyone knows its theme music, and it's the perfect place to get a feel for the high-speed gameplay. Green Hill Zone is probably the fastest level in the game due to its easy difficulty and open running lanes. Unlike the other levels, there aren't many obstacles that require you to stop completely. The final boss is just Robotnik going back and forth in his egomatic while swinging a giant checkered ball. It's pretty easy. Level 2 is the much slower Marble Zone. It has its moments, but most of the time you'll be dealing with precise platforming. It feels a lot more like a Mario level, which is ironic because that's exactly what Sonic was trying not to be. I did always like Marble Zone, but it does drag on for way too long, and it feels out of place as the second level in the game. The final boss can be tricky. You must jump over a lava pit while avoiding fire that Robotnik drops on the two platforms. Timing is the key. Level 3, Spring Yard Zone, is a return to high speed and is a precursor to the pinball levels we would see in future Sonic games. The music is great and the level really shows off the amazing physics engine. This is one of the main levels that stands out in Sonic's first adventure and set the standard for the sequels. The final boss is very easy. You must take out Robotnik as he drops down with a spike and removes square blocks from the floor. And then there's Labyrinth Zone. Because Sonic's creator, Yuji Naka, mistakenly thought that hedgehogs couldn't swim, we have to guide our hero very slowly through underwater platforming challenges without the ability to swim. The slowdown is terrible, and you don't have much time before you'll need air. Bubbles will rise from the ground, and inhaling a large one before time runs out is your only hope for survival. I do recommend taking it slow and grabbing some air before heading through the many deadly underwater hallways. 
The end boss of Labyrinth Zone is arguably the hardest in the game. You are forced to jump up a shaft completely filled with traps while dealing with underwater platforming and no way to get air. You don't even have to hit Robotnik this time, you just have to survive. Level 5, Starlight Zone, is a comfortable breeze across midnight rooftops. There are some bottomless pits, so you want to take the high road when possible. Also, watch out for exploding enemies. Chances are you will get hit a few times, but as long as you can recover a ring or two, you should be able to get through this level fairly easily. At the end of Starlight Zone, you must either launch spiked balls or yourself at Robotnik using seesaws placed conveniently around the boss room. The final level, Scrap Brain Zone, is a death trap. Bottomless pits, razor blades, deadly conveyor belts, crushing machines, you name it. Scrap Brain Act 1 is hard enough, and it gets even harder in Act 2. Then, Act 3, back to Labyrinth Zone. Quickly run straight ahead to take a shortcut and avoid it altogether. The final showdown with Dr. Robotnik can be challenging. You are given no rings and you must avoid electric orbs. Eggman will be in one of the four cylinders that will try to crush you and you must hit him in the short time that he is exposed. Once he is defeated, you can hit his Eggomatic as he flees to send him crashing down. Sonic finishes the game celebrating with all of the rescued animals. If you collected the six Chaos Emeralds, Sonic will juggle them before jumping into his ending pose. To collect all the Emeralds, you must finish an act with at least 50 rings, then complete a dizzying special stage. Good luck with that. Sonic the Hedgehog's attempt at equaling memorable characters like Mario and Mickey Mouse was a huge success. The game became the killer app for the Sega Genesis and would spawn many sequels. The controls were simple, only one button and a D-pad was needed. Everyone of all ages could get into this game. The music also was a huge component to the game's success and showed what the Genesis was capable of although many games couldn't pull off nearly as good a soundtrack using the same hardware. Sonic the Hedgehog replaced Altered Beast as the pack and game to the system and took over as Sega's mascot. In the winter of 1991, thanks to Sonic, the Genesis outsold the popular Super Nintendo. It was the first time since 1985 that anyone other than Nintendo led the console market. Sonic the Hedgehog was supposed to have a sound test like the ones found in its Genesis sequels. It ended up getting cut from the final release. They used the extra space for the iconic opening Sega screen. The chant took up one-eighth of the cartridge's memory and was bigger than some whole levels. Sonic the Hedgehog is a true classic. It promised super speed, super graphics, and super attitude, and it delivered. The game has a few flaws, but they would be fixed in time for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Nevertheless, it was a great way to kick off the series and still holds up as one of the best 2D platformers available today. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the review and the trip down memory lane. Make sure to stay tuned because next time we'll be looking at Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'll see you guys there. Until then, stay trippy everybody.